Oh, you came back for more science news. So cute. In James Bond style fashion, computer hackers have used lasers to hack into air-gapped computers. Air-gapped computers are essentially a computer that is not connected to the internet, either wired or wirelessly. So imagine a laptop in airplane mode getting hacked by computers with lasers. Pew, pew. These types of computers are used in places where the data is very sensitive, such as power plants, where any type of hack could be very detrimental to millions of users. But these computers still aren't immune and scientists are continuing to try and find ways to hack into them to do it before the bad guys do. But most recently, scientists found a way to use LED lights and lasers to communicate back and forth, and they were able to achieve up to 100 kilobytes per second from 30 meters away with this method. Now, you could also be affected by this because are you working at top secret information from home? Are your computers, phones, or printers sitting next to a window? Well, you might want to rethink this decision because scientists put a very detailed laser hacking guide out there for free for anyone one to look at. So hide your computers, hide your phones, and hide your printers because they're hacking everyone out there. He's climbing in your windows, he's snatching your people up. Speaking of hacking technology, the argument for 5G being safe continues. The government hasn't confirmed whether they're using this to hack our brains, but the FAA asked AT&T and Verizon not to turn on their 5G within two miles of airports. 5G in the US utilizes a larger portion of the radio wave spectrum right next to the spectrum reserved for airplane altimeters. Classic America. Why can't we just be like the Europeans and point our 5G antennas downwards and use a different radio spectrum. Ugh. The FAA estimates that roughly 78% of commercial aircrafts are unaffected in low visibility landings. However, there is a chance that the other 22% of airplanes that are affected are going to have to need new equipment installed. Anyways, while we're on that side of the Atlantic Ocean, I might as well talk about what scientists are doing to learn how hippos communicate. Scientists have discovered a unique way hippos react to stranger danger, poop spraying. Hippos tend to be very aggressive with other paws they don't recognize. So, in an effort to help safely relocate these hippos, they need to find a way to alleviate this aggression between different pods. To test communication methods, scientists recorded hippo calls and played them to stranger pods, and after playing these hippo recordings from one pod to another, scientists got sprayed with poop. Hippos do this to mark pod territories, and when the pods are complete strangers, the poop spraying is even more aggressive and constant. I'm definitely going to teach my kids this so that when strangers come up to them, they're throwing their poop. Now knowing this territory marking language, scientists can take loudspeakers to play hippo calls in areas where the new pods will be relocated. This will get the local hippo pods to start to recognize the pod that's about to be relocated so that when they are introduced, the aggression will be less severe and the new pod will be able to survive a lot easier. Who knew that hippo poop could be so informative? Whoa, the ad quantum space really comes at you fast. This video is sponsored by the Daily Beakers newsletter. Make sure to add your name to the attendance list down below in the description. And get caught up on any science news anytime I haven't posted to YouTube. Because I mean, we are called the Daily Beaker, so you should be getting daily science. I mean, did you hear about the goldfish that could drive? What about the man who walked from Argentina to Alaska? That's right, you didn't hear about this because you're not on the list. Add your name to this list and get Daily Beaker content delivered straight to your inbox. Whoa, what just happened? Last thing I remember is hippo poop. The ad quantum space is getting stronger. Our final story today covers this robot arm. Okay, not actually this one, but something a little bit cooler. Scientists have linked a brain-computer interface with a literal robot arm to allow tetraplegic patients to interact with their world. While this isn't the first time we've been able to use our minds to control robot appendages, this is the first time that we've incorporated a machine learning algorithm into a product. This helps remove the variability of brain signals and allows users to have so much more control. The machine learning algorithm gets to know the patient's brain, learning which electrical signals and emotions indicate a successful motion. The researchers at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology says that this could be implemented in a wide range of products such as wheelchairs. This would give the user more precise control over their movements and allow them to have another degree of freedom. I mean, imagine if we even implemented this into an exoskeleton suit and now these tetraplegic patients are able to completely go about their lives independent of any help. I mean, the future in this space is pretty amazing. So that's the end of this week's recap. Make sure to comment down below your favorite news article of the week and like and subscribe the video so that you're here next week.